Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in the previous lecture we have seen some traditional data mining life cycle techniques such as crisp dm as well as the ac double emit methodology. So in the today's lecture we are going to see the big data life cycle. So without further ado let's get into it. So in today's big data world the previous approaches that we have seen were incomplete or the suboptimal. So for example the ac double emit methodology disregards completely data collection and pre-processing of different data sources. So these stages normally constitute most of the work in a successful big data project. So the cycle is iterative to represent a real project. So to address the distinct requirements for performing big data, some specified step-by-step -step methodology is required for organizing the activities and tasks which are involved for acquiring, processing, analyzing and using that data. So this cycle includes these following stages that we will going to see one by one. The first one is business case evaluation. So in this stage we will define the business problem and we will evaluate correctly how much potential gain it may have for an organization. So here we will come to know about some different data sources which are needed and available for that project. Also we will develop some context and understanding and we will discuss all the possible solutions to approach and solve the business problem. And we will come up with the expected gains and cost of the project. The next stage is research stage. So in this stage we will analyze what other companies have done in the same situation. So this will involve for looking for different solutions which are reasonable for our problem statement and it involves adapting other solutions to the resources and requirements that your company has. So in this stage a methodology for the future stages should be defined. Our next stage is data acquisition. This is the most important step in the big data life cycle. So it will define which type of profile would be needed to deliver the resultant data product. So data gathering is a non-trivial step of the process. So it involves gathering some unstructured data from the different sources which takes a significant amount of time to be completed. Which will be then provided in the next stage which is data extraction and cleansing. So once the data is retrieved, it needs to be stored in an easy to use format. So this process often requires a large time allocation to be delivered with good quality. So it will require the presence of an analytic sandbox, the team execute, load and transform to get the data into sandbox. The next stage is data storage. So once the data is processed, it sometimes needs to be stored in a database. So big data technologies offers a plenty of alternative regarding this point. So the most commonly alternative is using the Hadoop file system which is HDFS for storage which will provide users for a limited version of SQL known as Hive query language. So what is Hive and how to use it that we will see in our upcoming tutorials. So this will allow most analytic tasks to be done in a similar ways as would be done in the traditional BI data warehouse. So this stage of cycle is related to the human resource knowledge in terms of the abilities to implement different architectures. Our next stage is data analysis. So the data analysis is dedicated to carrying out the actual analysis task which is typically involves one or more type of analytics. So this stage can be iterative in nature especially if the data analysis is exploratory in which the case analysis is repeated until the appropriate pattern or relation is uncovered. So depending on the type of analytic result which we require, this stage can be simple as querying a data set to compute the aggregation for comparison. So on the other hand, it can be as challenging as combining data mining and complex statistical analysis techniques to discover patterns and anomalies or to generate some statistical or mathematical model to depict a relationship between the variables. So it totally depends on which aggregations and filters you want to apply on your data as an end result. Our next step is modeling and assessment. So the prior stage should have produced several data sets for training and testing 
for example a predictive model so this stage involves trying different models and looking forward for solving the business problem at hand so in practice it is normally desired that the model would give some insight into the business and finally the best model is selected evaluating its performance on a left out data set and the last stage of big data analytics cycle is implementation so in this stage as the name suggests the data product developed is implemented in the data pipeline of the company so this involves setting up the validation scheme while the data product is working so in order to track its performance this involves setting up a validation scheme while the data product is working in order to track its performance so for example in case of implementing a predictive model this stage would involve applying the model to a new data and once the response is available which will evaluate the model so this was all about the big data life cycle and the different stages involved in it so if you like this lecture please subscribe to our channel and ring the notification bell to get the latest updates and don't forget to follow us on our social media that i have linked in the description below thanks for watching